Welcome to Politics HQ. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has declared today, that's Thursday, July 11th, uh, that it is unconstitutional for state governors to hold funds allocated for local government administrations. The seven-man panel in the judgment delivered by Justice Emmanuel Agbim uh, declared that the 774 local government councils in the country should manage their funds themselves. Also, we will be talking about the National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party having suspended Dan or that's Obi, its national vice chairman. Of course, these are the issues tonight in Politics HQ. I am Dagbo Adigboye. Let's begin. In a landmark judgment today, the Supreme Court declared that's today, July 11th, that it is unconstitutional for state governors to hold funds allocated for local government administrations. The seven-man panel, in a judgment delivered by Justice Manuel Agim, declared that the 774 local government councils in the country should manage their funds themselves. The Apex Court held that the power of the government is partitioned into three arms of government, the federal, the state, and the local government. The court further declared that a state government has no power, I repeat, has no power to appoint a caretaker committee and a local government council is only recognizable with a democratically elected government. Well, joining me on the program this evening to discuss this is Libras Oshama, a legal practitioner and a human rights activist. Libras, thank you for joining me on the program. Let's get your immediate reaction to the ruling of the uh, Supreme Court. Libras, are you there? And, um, yes. Something that, um, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, um, like I said, it is something that um, a lot of us have clamored for. It's a welcome development, and um, I'm glad that the Supreme Court had told this line, even though a lot of governors had interpreted Section 162 upside down. The Supreme Court had put a, a final rest to the interpretation of Section 162, subsection, seven, uh, subsection 6, 7, and 8. Uh, because um, if you remember, subsection 6, subsection 162 um, creates the state's um, local government joint account. And so there have been a lot of misconception about that account, whether it was an account where the state and local government can both drop money from. Mm. But by the interpretation that the Supreme Court has given today, it clearly means that it's an account meant for the local government and local government only. And that also the process of having caretaker committees at the local government level is forbidden uh, by the Constitution because Section 7 clearly guarantees a democratically elected local go a government at the local government level. So it is um, an awesome interpretation. It's um, a judgment that everyone would be proud of, should be proud of. And um, uh, also it is something that um, we should, the federal government should build on in collaboration with um, democratic stakeholders to ensure that government at the local government level, it's um, governance at the local government level is encouraged and um, so that governance will truly get to the people that need it, unlike what we have now. I mean, uh, what, one clause there is uh, the clause of democratically elected, you know, uh, local government representatives. Now, we know that in reality, uh, many of these local governments are run by caretaker committees. Now, uh, looking at the current reality and then this judgment, uh, how does it stand? I mean, in states, for instance, that are run by caretaker committees? What it means is that any state that is run by caretaker committee will not get their funds directly. You mm -hmm. know, you can't be giving funds to a local government that uh, it's, it, it's um, uh, not in compliance with Section 7 of the Constitution. Because if you permit me to read quickly, it says the system of local government by democratically elected local government council is under this Constitution guaranteed. And accordingly, the, con the government of every state are subject to section, uh, to section 8 of the Constitution, ensure the existence 
under a law which provides for the establishment, structure, composition, finance, and functions of such councils. So it is in that light, it is in that light that subsection, if you look at section 162, mm. sub, subsection um, 8, subsection 8, if you permit me quickly, section, subsection 6 of section 162 says, every state shall maintain special account to be called state joint local government account, into which shall be paid all allocation to the local government council of the state from the federation account and from the government of the state. Subsection 7 now goes further to create account uh, monies to be paid from the federation account. Each state shall pay to local government council in its area of jurisdiction such proportion of its total revenue on such term and in man and such manner as may be prescribed by the National Assembly. Subsection 8, uh, 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 section 8, uh, subsection 8, sorry. The amount standing to the credit of local government council of state shall be distributed among the local government council of that state on each term and in such manner as may be prescribed by the state as of assembly. So what all of this means, the, the uh, com co uh, community reading of section 7 and section 162 is the fact that for you to enjoy this benefit, you must be a democratically elected local government. And so that's what the Supreme Court also has stated today, that uh, the state governors have no power to usurp a democratically elected government, sacking of local government or allowing the tenure of local government to lapse without conducting election. And let's take it a bit further. If we allow the tenure of state governments to lapse without conducting election and you allow the caretaker committees at uh, the state's level, are we not calling um, resorting to anarchy? So mm -hmm. uh, what will happen will take us back to an interpretation of what happened during Obasanjo's era, where Obasanjo with head funds meant for um, Lagos State uh, local government, even though, as at that time, it was not backed by any law or a, ju a judgment of the court. Because mind you, when I say any law, because the law is what the court says it is. And so today, in as far as um, the law is concerned, the Supreme Court has stated what the law is, and the law is the, the fact that every local government must have democratically elected local government uh, officers at that uh, level. And so if a state now decides to run its local government without um, democratically elected local government, what it means is that those local government, the federal government will not, you know, allocate revenue to those local government because they are, those persons are usurpers and they are unknown to the constitution, All right. the now, laws of the land. Now, before we move to, of course, uh, some reservation and concerns by notable Nigerians, what becomes the uh, fate of local government uh, development authorities that are not, you know, uh, recognized in the law? Uh, that's, um, you, you know, those, you, apart from um, subsection 8, you also have subsection 7. Uh, subsection, uh, sorry, apart from subsection 7, you also have subsection 8. So why that takes us to is a situation where it is only those local governments that are recognized by law that gets allocation, and those not recognized by the federal law, the constitution, would have to generate their revenue like they do in Lagos. You have a situation where these development areas generate revenue. But what Lagos state government has consistently done is, you know, they have a pool, just like um, a subsection seven created, uh, where all the revenues are provable to the local government are shared among the local government. It is not that it is a bad thing to share revenue among the local government. The challenge here is the fact that that revenue that is meant for local government, the state governors still go there to dip their hand in that revenue, mm. all in the name of sharing, you know, a, a, a joint revenue. A situation where you have a hundred million dollars or hundred million naira in an account, for example, meant for the distribution by local government, and then the state governor goes there and remove forty million. And now leave 60 million for them to share, all in the name of it's a joint account. You know, so that's where the fear had been consistently. So I think, you know, uh, what will happen, they probably find a way around it. But um, the subsection six, having created a joint account, it still means that those money will come directly to the local government through a joint account.
Mm. Now, let's uh, look at some reactions by uh, notable Nigerians, one of which is uh, the former governor of Delta State. Uh, we have, of course, extensively uh, flawed the uh, uh, judgment by the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court, in his words, has dealt a severe setback on the principle of federalism, as defined by Section 162, Subsection 3 of the 1999 Constitution. And, of course, as amended, the uh, section expressly provides uh, any amount standing to the credit of the Federation account shall be distributed among the federal and state governments and the local government councils in the state on such terms in such manner as may be proscribed by the National Assembly. Section 6 provides further clarity on this subject. It went on to say further that um, uh, this issue might bring about you know, uh, the Supreme Court's ruling appears to contradict the expli explicit provision of Section 162. I wish the graphics could come up on screen as I, you know, for further breakdown and, of course, a, a graphical interpretation of this. Uh, contradict the explicit provisions, you know, of the Section 162 of the 1999 Constitution. You also went far, uh, further to talk about the balance of power being affected and also talked about state autonomy in his uh, write-up and, of course, our financial independence and creating a precedence. Now, I, I want you to react to this extensively. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, looking at all he has raised, what is your reaction? Yeah, I, I understand his fears. Being a former governor, you know how they usurp the powers of local government, how local government account has become an ATM for them to draw, you know, slush fund from. So I understand its fear. If truly, if indeed we practice a, 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 a true federal government, nobody will be, will be raising these fears. We won't have a situation where the federal government will control about 50, 52% of the revenue, while the states and the local government will, you know, uh, share about 40 something percent, and then you keep 4% for ecological fund. It is because we operate a federal system of government, dress a unitary system of government. That is why the, it is now beholds on the court to begin to distribute these powers, to say, no, you do not have these powers to usurp what you're doing. What if the governors had complied strictly with Section 7 that creates a democratically elected government? What the governors, what the section did is to create local government, and then now allow the state government to control those local government. But what the state governors have done consistently is to say that they cannot, they do not have the powers to actually allow a functional local government to, to run. What they have done, including Lagos, is to usurp and take over completely the powers of the local government. And a situation where state governors take over the powers of the local government, what the court is doing now is to clearly delineate and define those functions to say, look, this is the extent of your powers and this is the extent of the powers of the local government. I do not think that the former governor clearly gets the impact of Section 162 correctly because the import of Section 162 is not that the state shall share from that account. Because what the governors have been doing is, like I read to you just now, what the governors have been doing is to dip their hand in the coffers of that joint account under the pretense mm. of being a joint account. There is no provision in that account that gives state government power to draw funds from it. And I read again, with all sense of humility, I, dis I, I completely disagree with the governor's former governor's position. It says that if you look at Section 162, I read again so that our, our viewers will understand. Subsection 6, every state shall maintain a special account to be called state joint local government account. If you look at it, there is no comma after the states because these things are very important in interpreting laws. There is no comma after the state. It's a state joint local government account. So what it means, it's not as if it's a state account and then local government account. And it goes further to say, into which, into which shall be paid all allocation to the local government council of the state coming from the federation account and from the state account. 
So what it means is that the funds that are accruable to the local government shall be paid to that account, not the state funds. Mm. Funds are, that are accruable to the local government from the state, funds that are accruable to the federal government from the uh, uh, that are accruable to the local government from the federal government also. All those funds shall be paid into that account. And then Section 7 now goes for that. Each state shall pay to the local government council in its area of jurisdiction such proportion of its total revenue on such term and in such manner as may be prescribed by the National Assembly. Okay. And then it also says, the amount standing to the credit of the local government council of state shall be distributed among the local government council of that state on such term and in such manner as may be prescribed by the House of Assembly. There is nowhere in this section where it empowers the state government to draw funds from that account. Mm. What had been happening, where there is a problem, where there's a crisis now, where there's a crisis is because the state governors are drawing money from that account and starving the local government of funds. That is what necessitated the suit at right, the Liberals. Supreme Court. No, if the all right, Liberos, I, I, uh, apologies for, of course, uh, interrupting so, your line of thought. Liberos, can you hear me? Okay, Liberos, uh, we lost you for a moment. I sincerely apologize for interrupting your line of thought. But uh, let's uh, move swiftly hear. to the issue of accountability. Right now, we will be seeing a situation whereby uh, local governments, uh, I mean, in the coming weeks, would have direct access to, I mean, to their funds, the complete amount. Now, this is coupled with what they also generate internally outside, you know, the allocation there. How do you think accountability, you know, can be sustained to ensure that these local governments use these funds meticulously and in the interest of the people. And to what extent can people hold the local governments now accountable? For instance, can I come out and say, I don't like the road leading to my house on my street. Isn't nice. So I go and then I say, you know what, my local government chairman, I should hold you accountable for this. That is, the, see, the governors are not headmasters or head boy that should whip local government chairman into line. The state House of Assemblies are not uh, sanitary prefects that should sanitize local government. The responsibility of sanitizing governance, democratic governance, it rests on the people that elected those people at, in, 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 um, uh, at the helm of affairs. So the essence of local government, that is how it is practiced world over, is for the people to take responsibility. Like you have said, if the road in your local government is not motorable, it is for the people to go to the local government council and say, we know how much came. Come and account to us. Do you know what they do in others' club? Every, every, every quarter, the local government sit down with the people at town hall, and then they plan. They have a short-term plan, medium-term plan and long-term plan to check the initial plan and what has been actualized and then set new targets for themselves. But here, what we have is a situation where governors appoint people into local government council, take over the funds that is meant for their functioning. The State House of Assembly will take over some of those functions like it's happening in Lagos, where almost the entire function of local government is taken over completely by the state, signages, uh, 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 tenement rate and the rest, and then they say they share revenue that accrues. That's not the way it is. What we are doing, we have turned the state to a local government, where governors are local government chairman, they demean themselves without knowing that that is what they are indirectly doing. The, the essence of checking accountability at the local government rests on you and I, on us, and not a governor. Because we also need to check the governor, we also need to check the state of assembly. That is why you have councillors also at the local government level. Do we even, today, do we even reckon with councillors? Do we even know whether they exist? So until we strengthen governance at the local government level, all of this, uh, the, the bottle system that we're operating will not be operational. Imagine, I want to ask you, Goke, 
what is the duty of federal government sharing palliative? That should be the functions of a local government. Why would federal government be sharing palliative? Is it, if federal government is giving rice to everybody, how about some people that need beans? How about those that need yam? Must everybody in Nigeria eat rice? Because it is the functions of your local government to understand your peculiarity, mm. know your problems, and know how to deal with it. But All a situation right. where you have a federal government that is a local government and the president is clearly a local government chairman, you are going to have these headmasters and head boy, um, uh, sorry, uh, we're going to have this headmaster and head boy mentality. All right, where... us. All right, leave us. You know, uh... this headmaster and, and head, a headmaster and head boy mentality where um, you have... Um, you, you know, uh, governors thinking that it, as, as head boy, it's their responsibility to whip local government uh, chairman into line. That's All right, Liberos. democracy. Uh, th thank you so much, uh, Liberos, for being, of course, on the program with me this evening. Thanks for your insight. My pleasure.